everyone, and welcome to the Deploying Oracle WebLogic Server on Kubernetes and Oracle Cloud Workshop. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. My name is Marcy Samuelson, and I am Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle, and I will be your guide and presenter for today's workshop. I'm very excited to show you some innovative new technologies that you can take advantage of in the Oracle book with Oracle WebLogic and Kubernetes. During the workshop, we will have many of our cloud engineers available to help you as you go through the hands-on material. We have Sasanka, Leah, and Casey who are experts in this area and will be able to answer any questions that you have. Here's the agenda for today. We will cover an introduction and overview, have you sign up for a free trial, and then have you get hands-on experience following labs one through four. We will spend about 60 minutes in today's session covering all the labs. You may not complete all of the exercise today, so don't worry. Please work on these exercises at your own pace, and you can ask questions as you go. Or we will provide you with a way to get any questions you have answered after the workshop is over. If you already have a cloud account, great. You may use that to complete the labs. If not, we will have you sign up for a cloud trial in today's session. There are two links provided for today's workshop on this slide. The lab guide provides the step-by-step -step instructions you will follow to perform the lab. You will have the lab guide available and then open another browser tab to perform the steps. If you need to sign up for a free trial, you can use the link provided on this page. If you already have an account, please use, use that account to perform the lab. If you have any questions, please see these questions in the Q&A section in Zoom, not chat, and one of the panelists will answer. Please remember to put all the information in one question and include the region name, database version, the page and step of the lab guide, and any error message text so we can support you properly. Also, I just want to remind everyone to please read carefully all of the steps in the lab, and please do not skim. Each step is required for your labs to work properly. If your lab is not working, please check to ensure you followed every step first before posting a question. This session is going to be recorded, so you can review it again. You will find the recording session in the Office Hours page in the next few days. Before we turn it over to you, to get started working on the lab, I will turn it over to Sasanka, who will provide a quick overview of the architecture, and then Leah will give a quick demo of what you will do during the lab so you know what to expect. Here you can see WebLogic Kubernetes OCI architecture. We are using release version of 2.5 of the WebLogic server. WebLogic Kubernetes operator is a common set of Kubernetes APIs to provide and improve user experience when automating operations such as provisioning, lifecycle management, application versioning, product patching, scaling, and security. The Kubernetes operator is developed as an op open source project fully supported by Oracle. The project can be found in GitHub repository and the images are available to be pulled from Docker Hub. Here you can see your customer tenancy with all WLS domain and operator images in repository. You can see your Kubernetes cluster. Inside your Kubernetes cluster, you are going to deploy all required items such as Kubernetes operator, traffic, open source load balancer, and WebLogic domain. We use Helm, a package manager for Kubernetes to install traffic and the Kubernetes operators. In the Oracle Cloud Shell, you can use kubectl command to create WebLogic domain. After creating WebLogic domain, you can see your WLS cluster, including admin servers and managed servers as pods. Also, you can improve WebLogic domains in a Kubernetes persistent volume or persistent volume claim. Next slide. Leah is going to explain each step of his this hands-on workshop. Hello, my name is Leah, and today I will walk you through the on-premise WebLogic server to Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes workshop. First, let's log into the Oracle Cloud account. 
From any browser, go to oracle.com to access the Oracle Cloud. Click the icon in the upper right corner, click Sign in to Cloud. Enter your cloud account name in the input field and click Next. If you have a free tier account provisioned, this can be found on your welcome email. Enter your username and password in the input fields. Note, you are likely to be prompted to change the temporary password in the welcome email. In that case, enter a new password in the password field. Click Sign In to open the OCI console. Compartments are used to isolate resources within your OCI tenant. Role-based access policies can be applied to manage access to compute instances and other resources within a compartment. Click the hamburger icon in the upper left corner to open the navigation menu. Under the Identity section of the menu, click Compartments. If you don't already have a demo compartment, click Create Compartment. In the Name field, enter Demo. Enter a description of your choice. In the Parent Compartment field, ensure that your root compartment is selected. It will have the same name as your Oracle Cloud account. Click Create Compartment. In the list on the left-hand side, click Policies. A service policy allows OKE to create resources in your tenancy, such as compute. An OKE resource policy, or policies, let you specify which groups in your tenancies can perform certain tasks with the OKE API. Optionally, you can create more resource policies if you want to control which groups can have access to different parts of the OKE service. In the left side menu, select a root compartment for your account. A list of policies in the compartment you're viewing is displayed. Click Create Policy. Enter the following. A unique name for the policy. The name must be unique across all policies in your tenancy. You cannot change this later. A user-friendly description. Select Keep Policy Current. It ensures that the policy stays current with any future changes to the service's definitions of verbs and resources. A policy statement. It must be Allow Service OKE to manage all resources in tenancy. Don't apply any tags. Click Create. Click on the hamburger menu. Under Developer Services, select Kubernetes Clusters. On the cluster list page, select the root compartment and click Create Cluster. Select Quick Create. The Quick Create feature uses the default settings to create a quick cluster, with new network resources as required. This approach is the fastest way to create a new cluster. Click Launch Workflow. Specify the following configuration details on the cluster creation page. The name of the cluster. Leave the default value. The name of the compartment. Leave the default value. The version of Kubernetes. Select 15.7 or lower. Don't select version 16, even if it is the default version. Please select version 15 in such cases. For visibility type, select public. The shape determines the number of CPUs and the amount of memory allocated to each node. The list shows only those shapes available in your tenancy that are supported by OKE. Select the available VM standard 2.1. Leave the default value 3 for the number of nodes. Click Next to review the details you entered for the new cluster. On the Review page, click Create Cluster to create the new network resources and the new cluster. You will see the network resources being created for you. Here you can see the cluster you just provisioned. When it has been created, the new cluster will have a status of active. Click the Cloud Shell icon and the console header on the top right of the browser. Wait a few seconds for the Cloud Shell to appear. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Cloud Shell is a web browser-based terminal accessible from the Oracle Cloud console. Your Cloud Shell comes with the OCI CLI pre-authenticated, so there's no setup to do before you start using it. To complete the kubectl configuration, click Access Cube Config on your Cluster Detail page. A dialog appears, which contains the customized OCI command that you need to execute to create a Kubernetes configuration file. Select the copy link to copy the command and then paste it into the terminal. To check that the kubectl is working, try using the get node command. If you see the node's information, then the configuration was successful. 
In order to have permission to access the Kubernetes cluster, you need to authorize your OCI account as a cluster admin on the OCI container engine for Kubernetes cluster. This will require your user OCID. In the upper right corner, select User Profile and select your username. On the Details page, you will find the user OCID, select Copy. Then execute the role binding command using your OCID. Now your OCI OKE environment is ready to deploy to your WebLogic domain. Now, let's clone the Operator Git repository to the OCI Cloud Shell. Next, let's create the operator's namespace. We will also create the service account. And finally, add a stable repository to Helm, which will be neater later for the third-party services. Now, we are going to install the operator using Helm. First, let's make sure that we're in the operator's local git repository folder. Use the Helm install command to install the operator Helm chart. As part of this, you must specify a release name for their operator. Next, let's check the operator pod. Let's also check on the operator helm chart. Here we can see that the WebLogic server Kubernetes operator has been installed. So far on our journey, we have created OKE on OCI. We have installed and configured the WebLogic Kubernetes operator, and now we need to install and configure the traffic. First, let's create a namespace for the traffic and get its load balancer IP slash host name. We can also print just the public IP address. We'll need this in the next couple steps. Let's verify the Helm charts. You can also access the traffic dashboard by using curl by copying and pasting in the IP address you just printed. Now it's time to deploy a WebLogic domain in OKE using WebLogic Kubernetes operator. First, let's create the domain namespace. Next, create a Kubernetes secret containing the administration server boot credentials. Now we need to update the load balancer and operator configuration to specify where the domain will be deployed. Here we are going to use Helm upgrade to update the operator and traffic. To deploy WebLogic domain, you need to create a domain resource definition, which contains the necessary parameters for the operator to start the WebLogic domain properly. Please make sure to copy the provided domain.yaml file. Make sure to review it in your favorite editor or browser. Create the domain custom resource object. Next, check the introspector job. Check the pods in the domain namespace, and soon you'll see the server starting. You should see three running pods. If you don't see all the running pods, wait and check periodically. The entire domain deployment may take up to two to three minutes, depending on compute shapes. In order to access any application or administration console deployed on WebLogic, you have to configure a traffic ingress. Execute the ingress resource definition. Once the ingress has been created, you can construct the URL of the administration console. If you didn't note down the external IP address, execute the print command to retrieve it. Construct the URL by using the external IP address followed by the word console. Then paste this into your web browser. Enter the administrative user credentials and click Login. You can click on deployments on the left and see your sample web application. You can also test the sample web application by altering the URL. Thank you for joining me in today's workshop. I hope you found it helpful. So at this point, we will turn it over to you. Please click the lab guide link to open the lab guide and start working through the instructions at your own pace. Again, we will have experts on the call to help you with any questions you have. Please put your questions in the Q&A area. You will have the rest of the time to perform the lab. 
It should take you about 45 minutes, and then we will provide you with a few links at the end on where to go to get help after the session if you still have questions. So let's get started. So this concludes our session for today. We have a number of links here that might help you in the future. A few, the first two links are events that we have going on. One is called Developer Live with a link that we have various events going on each month. We also have office hour workshops that you can attend and the link is provided here, as well as we have a number of other labs that you can go through at your own pace. So the link is provided. If you have additional questions and want help, feel free to submit a request for a cloud coach. These are technical experts that can help you with any questions that you have. So thank you for your time today, and we hope you have a great day.